Hello and welcome to another battle in Napoleon Total War, this time on Grassy Flatlands. My opponent is EME from the Shadow Ravens clan, here is Spain. I play as Austria here and I want to present you some standard tactics and formations for this map. I use normally the rather old school formation um, so uh, with the light infantry in the middle covered by some line infantry uh, and a flanking force of line infantry on both sides uh, normally an equal amount of uh, quality uh, yeah of, of numbers and quality in troops like uh, I normally have uh, guards with uh, other nations Austria obviously has no guards but um, with Spain, for example, uh, you have two guards and you normally uh, play one on each flank. So you have moral support and no weaker flank. The old guard flank is uh, <laughs> a bit out of date today uh, because people will just run away from this uh, side. But still, it can be effective sometimes. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I have five Grenzer light infantry here uh, in the middle as I said and uh, ten line infantry so a very rather defensive uh, build uh, with less cavalry only four. The Austrian Uhlans are the second best standard Lancer cavalry in the game um, and the German Fusiliers uh, are a bit better than the Spanish Fusiliers but not much and I back them up with uh, two Hungarians on, uh, yeah, one on each side. They have one more moral point. And I have the uh, six-star Karl Schwarzenberg general. So with Austria, uh, it's a bit problematic to play here on Grassy Flatlands because you, as I mentioned, you don't have any guards. So uh, yeah, since you play rather spread out here on this map. Uh, your general needs to be close to the action so your moral uh, does not break. Um, and uh, this is obviously uh, hard to manage if you uh, play on both flanks. Uh, your general can't be everywhere at the same time. This is why Austria is not that uh, often seen on uh, Grissi. Spain is a very common nation here. It's uh, normally uh, uh, used very defensively um, against uh, yeah, cavalry-based nations like uh, France. And yeah, they have uh, some advantages. Uh, the cheap uh, yeah, Spanish units allow you to bring 20 units uh, and the yeah, maximum amount of guards uh, which is the volume guard unit um, you can bring two of them and uh, especially you can bring the nine star general uh, which what he did um, EME uh, here in this game so this is a, a good nation to use here on uh, on this map the stats uh, the shooting stats do not matter that much on grassy because uh, it's n uh, normally not that much of a standoff uh, shooting fight. It's a very dynamic uh, way to play here on this map. And you, yeah, as I said, you don't stay that long in shooting fights with your light uh, with your line infantry. That's uh, that's why the shooting stats do not matter that that much. So he decided for a classic build with five uh, light infantry, five cavalry, and nine. Uh, line infantry uh, he leveled up some of them and uh, brought yeah five lanceros uh, one of them does not have an upgrade but uh, four of them have um, he basically also has his light infantry in the middle but um, not a, b a bit more spread out at the moment that's like the newer way uh, of playing Grassy, um, this is a very defensive way uh, because, yeah, of course, when you spread out your light infantry uh, and you don't have a um, defined flanking force, if I can call it like this, um, it's uh, quite uh, or a bit harder to attack this. But um, at the same time, yeah, you 
yourself can't uh, do much as well, so uh, I do not really like this. Mm. And because I want to do something, especially when it's a uh, yeah, uh, it's a game between nations uh, which do not spam cavalry that much like this uh, this time. So uh, when you play against Sweden with eight cavalry, you can't uh, you have to play very uh, cautious, uh, so you don't spread out too much. You uh, have a formation which can close gaps very fast uh, so you don't get overrun and pull through with uh, by, uh, with recovery um, because then the game will be effectively over for you so he is uh, redeploying uh, his units so he uh, reacts on my formation and has his uh, yeah caps uh, keeps his light infantry in the center but sends his uh, yeah flanking force um, to meet my flanking force by this um, uh, change of formation I arrive much earlier here in in the road uh, which is the the only uh, way, uh, I mean the only place which provides some tactical advantage here, um, because the road and trees will, um, yeah, spend some cover from enemy bullets. He uh, arrives with uh, his uh, Falloon guards, uh, two Fusiliers and a backup Fusilier here on my left, while his light infantry. Uh, is arriving here in block formation and he has uh, his balloon guards over here on the right and he does something um, a bit strange he uh, sends his balloon guard to his right wing here you can see that his uh, yeah, unit is running all the way to the other side here and I don't think this is necessary, but we will see. So I uh, go into light formation here uh, because I am um, scared that he attacks. But I have a uh, yeah better position here, as I said, in the road. So we open fire. The Grances are uh, much better than the Spanish light infantry. Uh, but on this maximum range, uh, it is uh, yeah, his. It, it is in his interest to um, yeah commit his forces, his light infantry, in a uh, fight on maximum range. So I spend my ammunition of my better units uh, on his weaker ones. And I can't shoot, so I can't shoot his fusilier off the line. He already sends a lancer unit here in through the middle uh, because my backup lines are uh, here in the back, so they do not get shot by missing bullets from the light infantry. That's that's a very nice move. I uh, he gets uh, catch me a bit off guard here. I did not expect him to uh, play that uh, such an offensive move here right in the beginning. So, um, yeah, as I said, I get a bit uh, catched off guard here. He has a golden opportunity to overflank here my, uh, my uh, left wing and cut them off from the main core of the army. He approaches with his other units, sends another Lancero here in the middle. He should have uh, redirected his Lanceros a bit earlier, but uh, two of his uh, Ulans are coming. I have to form square here. I'm targeting with my backup line. And that's a bit problematic now. He should have pulled through my uh, square probably or uh, gone for this flank, as I pointed out, uh, while he, his units are approaching. But he decided to, uh, yeah pull back his cavalry on the left, on, I mean on my left, and uh, I give target orders of those two Hulan cavalry 
I get a charge in the back of the Lanceros and this, this completely destroys them. The, his general is a bit too far away and his cavalry over here also get back uh, into the fight. And I miss the square with the Germans, they get a good charge here against my German Fusiliers, but I uh, back charge the other Lazero unit and my Hungarians do a good job in fighting off the, um, the lances here. My Germans survived the charge and he brings over his uh, other cavalry from the flank and I do the same. So I uh, counter-attack with my uh, units and this time I pay Our attention and form the square. This is very bad for him now because he lost already a lot of cavalry in the initial move. And uh, his units are too far away to support his cavalry uh, and he did a lot of damage to this unit but uh, his units also suffered uh, some casualties. He gets a volley off on uh, my Ulans somehow, actually they are out of range, but I don't know how. Um, so, uh, he attacked with some Lanceros here in the center, pushed back my uh, Grances here in the middle, but my backup lines are ready to shoot him, and he had to pull him uh, away again. And where is the Balloon card? Ah, here. He ran sideways here through the range of my Grances. This was of course very bad for his Volungard, which dropped to 74. And it's very tired because it ran all the way over here. Um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, like, we could say that uh, his attack catched me off guard, but he also catched himself off guard a bit uh, with his cavalry move and his balloon guard uh, micro um, it wasn't that uh, good and over here he has no guard anymore on the flank so I have the opportunity to um, attack on the right now I exchanged my uh, backline Hungarians with the small German Fusilier unit uh, this so I have uh, the yeah, stronger units with more men in the in the first row, and uh, the weaker unit as a backline, which can also uh, fight uh, off cavalry uh, pretty good. This is a uh, yeah something you can also do very good in team games to exchange weaker units with better units in the front row. Uh, now I include them in the line here uh, but since he has more uh, line infantry in the first row but I do not want to engage on this side since his both of his uh, Valoon guards are uh, yeah uh, on in the center and on his right I want to push the uh, his left because he has less units there I have four line infantry against two at the moment, uh, eventually uh, three at some point. So I made him shoot my uh, German Fusiliers here uh, with a s small amount of men and attack with my Grinses. My general is coming to this flank as well, and my uh, one of my cavalry uh, units attacks, so he I can stop him from uh, running away. And you see my moral dropping already, uh, even without a guard unit from the opponent around. But my general will arrive very soon. I made him form squares and uh, ch change. Uh, target order on the Lanceros, I charged them into the back and uh, changed again on the Spanish Light Infantry here. My backup line gets a shot off on the Lanceros, they will be out of the game. He uh, is still deploying his line here, so uh, he is not uh, able to shoot me with my cavalry. He misses the square with the Fusiliers, 
and I get into his ranks. His Spanish light infantry is out of the game. Another Lancero coming from uh, from the other side to stop me. He changes target order again from the square to the Lagrances. Then, uh, but again I back charge his Lanceros. But I need to change direction again, so uh, his fissures do not get away. And his Lancero suffered some more casualties from my Grances. Another Lancero recovery incoming. I uh, managed to form the squares, he did as well. But he lost more cavalry in the initial fight. He also had more cavalry than me, but um, yeah, it's uh, at the moment it's uh, this, is, this one is basically out of the game. I still have one here and 20 men, uh, Our men are one running, here sir. and 20 men over here. He has uh, a small one here, 33 here, and that's it. So. Uh, both of us still have two, but I have uh, some more men. His moral holds, uh, even while being under a heavy attack here, but his uh, general is also close to the action now. And now I have a problem because he has his 33 uh, cavalry on his left now, and uh, I do not have any cavalry anymore here. My uh, 45 are coming over. I uh, do it again what I explained. I uh, change my German Fusiliers to uh, full numbers basically against uh, 66. So they suffered a lot of casualties already but they can still protect my uh, light infantry from cavalry charges. And he uh, is retreating his left his problem is that his uh, Valoon Guard is not here on the uh, on the flank. They are, uh, uh, yeah, protecting the light infantry, which is a pretty useless task for his guard unit. Um, and especially his problem is that, uh, yeah, they dropped down to 72 already without doing anything. This was very unlucky for him that he uh, ran through the light infantry range in the beginning. So I'm uh, I redeployed uh, four uh, uh, lines here against his formation of four lines, and I'm still pushing with my grances, and I'm also pushing with my uh, four line infantry on the other side because he again sent all his cavalry units uh, to uh, this side. By this I have one more cavalry on my left and can overflank his yeah, units over here. So I'm coming with my 20 Ulans and I'm I can approach with my uh, with my left wing here. Forms a square with his balloon guard, which still has 96. And yeah, again, my problem is that I have to bring my general close to Our the action, running, uh, which I did not do in time. By this, my cavalry will, uh, yeah, is out of the game pretty fast. I think they ran 14 men or something. And he has a cavalry now, so uh, <laughs> now it's the other way around. He has cavalry uh, on the flank here, and I do not have. And also he has his 80 men balloon guard, which can do a lot of damage uh, on my weak light infantry. And the second Lancerus are incoming as well. Our men are running, sir! So I redeploy my uh, troops.
and he brings his general to his right wing. His Valoon guards are again running to <laughs> the side. Uh, and this obviously uh, means that he has no protection line for his light infantry in the middle anymore. I see this and send my cavalry here into the middle. Uh, but he reacts on it and uh, at least uh, brings his cavalry to, um, yeah, into the middle to protect his light infantry. I'm pushing uh, all uh, all my troops here on the right and in the center, so uh, he can't uh, redirect one of his line infantry into the middle. I'm attacking here from the side against the light infantry. The trees slow me down and uh, limit the speed here from my cavalry charge on his light infantry, but I still get a charge. And I try to get some volleys on his uh, fusiliers here on the sides. And he did not get away that good with his light infantry and now gets some shots in with my light infantry. And his two uh, other lanceros charge my unprotected Grenzer units, so well seen by him uh, that uh, this one is uncovered. But for some reason he now charges the covered one <laughs> and uh, yeah, his cavalry got shot by my backup line. But still, it survived because it's uh, the Spanish moral is great. And where's the Nougat? Here it is. He tanked the shots. He could have waited for his cavalry, but I get again a charge on his cavalry. But with my cavalry, he had greater numbers, so it won the charge. I concentrated my fire here and his uh, line men are running, sir. is exposed to my fire and he has a much weaker uh, num uh, line infantry in numbers on the side and has to retreat again and you see that there is a gap between his left and the center now so I can uh, yeah, push into this gap you see my target uh, cavalry movement orders here, I push through the gap and um, can overflank his, uh, his center and uh, his right wing while I'm pushing on my right so he doesn't get away. One of our units has used all its ammunition, sir. tries to save his right wing uh, from getting uh, pinned down here by my left wing B uh, while my cavalry would overflank them but I uh, killed all the light infantry units here in the center one of them came back into the, uh, into the fight he gave an uh, attack order here he charged my uh, German Fusiliers here on the flank. I did not expect this, and he uh, got a very good charge here. But he uses his general now, uh, and this is uh, very problematic because I have my general here as well, uh, which Our men would are make my sir. men hold against a cavalry charge by um, rallying them. And. Yeah, by losing his general staff, uh, it effectively ends the game. So this is something he should not have done here at this point. I mean, the game is already over basically, but uh, he ran away with his uh, right wing. And this is nonsense if he uh, loses his general. We have killed their general, sir. Now they must break. So this was it. So good game to uh, EME at this point, um, nice uh, initial uh, uh, move here, uh, but yeah, he um, 
made some mistakes uh, by uh, being that uh, <laughs> dynamic in the first uh, minutes of the game. But nice idea. And yeah, uh, thank you for watching. And see you in the next video. Bye.